Kelly Vogan, Consortium News. Ask her anything on Assange. Well, I'm going to ask you all a question first. Is anybody sick to the teeth of Julian Assange being called a hacker? Yes. Yes. What we have essentially is an organization that has called itself essentially an intelligence agency that is trying to inform the, the people of the world and has said that they want to hack to, to bring that information out and to publish it. What I've been covering for Consortium News, I've been in the courtroom for three years, if you count the pre-trial meetings, and I have mainly covered the forensics. I mean, that's been, I've been covering just about everything, but that's been my area that other journalists haven't covered. Now, I can tell you that the forensic examiner completely destroyed the narrative that the US put forward in terms of trying to insinuate that Julian Assange had conspired to hack and obtain classified material. Now, do you know why they have to do that? Because in 2010, Joe Biden was asked when he was vice president, is Julian Assange going to be charged? And his first three words were, if he conspired to get these classified documents with a member of the U.S. military, that's fundamentally different than if somebody drops on your lap, here, David, you're a press person, here is uh, classified material. If he conspired to obtain the information, please go to Consortium News. My article that details all of this, it also deals with how Ziggy, the uh, so-called hacker, was dispensed with as well. So there is nothing, nothing now for the US to hold on to with this keystone charge, the first one, the one that everybody thinks isn't important. That's the most important one, because if we can knock that one on the head, then he's just like any other journalist that had the material dropped in his lap. And those were Joe Biden's last words. It's different if you conspire to get the material than if it's just dropped on your lap. And of course, it has been shown that that's what happened. So rather than talk about forensics for five minutes, I'm actually going to appeal to the head and the heart. So this is a song that I wrote for three people that have two things in common. So those three people are Julian Assange, Chelsea Manning, and Aaron Schwartz. And it's almost Aaron Schwartz's day. Poor boy was facing 37 years. All three have in common that they gave the world information. You might not know Aaron so well, but he helped distribute the Pacer Library, all of the legal cases that cost a fortune, right? So people couldn't research for their defense without having to, to pay a lot of money. He was also very concerned about an uneven distribution of knowledge by JSTOR from MIT. And he felt that doctors in third world countries couldn't afford to read the latest papers on medicine. But anyway, so he suicided when he was 26 years old. Chelsea Manning, tried to suicide twice and almost succeeded. And the magistrate said, we will not extradite Julian because he will suicide. And that was on the basis of all the medical expert advice. All of them agreed more or less that Julian was a moderate or high suicide risk. So that, sadly, they had those things in common as well. So I will... Just give me a moment and I'll start the accompaniment. Can you hold the phone for me? Come on, fire. Oh, I'd like you to sing along and there'll be a moment where there's an opportunity for a slow hand clap. I think you might hear it coming. Julian tried to help us. Showed us how the powerful had a ground. It's 